On July 20th, 1969, the first people in human history landed on the moon, in the greatest moment of human achievement since the discovery of fire, at least in my opinion. After this, there were five other successful lunar landings, ending in Apollo 17. We have not been back since. The reason for this is complicated. Lack of public interest in further moon landings and politics are mostly to blame, but all of this is soon to change. Recently, countries and companies around the world have shown a greater interest in the moon, and rightfully so. The idea of establishing permanent colonies on the moon has not only become possible in recent years, but is now within reach. I've already made a separate video about why a moon colony would be extremely important to humanity and well worth the investment, link in the description. There are real economic incentives to build one, and it will be beneficial to whoever does. But the question must now be asked, who will colonize the moon first? Whoever establishes the first colony on the surface of the moon will undoubtedly become one of the most influential powers in history, able to project their influence on the rest of the solar system for decades to come, should their colony succeed. So far, there are two major players in this developing second space race, the United States and China. On one side, NASA has already begun the Artemis program, one of NASA's most ambitious projects yet, involving creating a series of missions that aims to put the first people back on the moon in over 50 years, build a lunar space station, and, most importantly, establish a permanent human presence on the moon. Artemis 1, the first in this series of missions, has already launched successfully, and preparations have begun for Artemis 2, which, as of the time of making this video, should launch in September of 2025. Preparations are also being made to search for water on the moon and land several other experiments there. But Artemis 3, which is targeting a September 2026 launch, aims to put humans back on the moon. If this is successful, Artemis 4 through 10 will likely send more humans for longer and longer stays, and build up a permanent base somewhere on the lunar south pole. But the Artemis program is not without its problems. One is, obviously, the scale of the project. SpaceX has been chosen to develop the Human Landing System, or HLS, for use during the Artemis program, which is essentially a lunar version of the Starship rocket. The HLS is necessary to land large amounts of people and cargo on the moon, and is far bigger and more complicated than anything ever landed on the moon before. To have access to the lunar south pole, it needs to be on an orbit that requires more fuel to get to than the Apollo missions. This, combined with the size of the HLS, means that it will need ludicrous amounts of fuel, and will have to be refueled in low Earth orbit before it can even go to the moon. The Artemis program is not the Apollo program, and the HLS needs to do far more than the Apollo lunar landers did. It's estimated that to get a single HLS enough fuel to send people and cargo to the moon, it will require more than 10 launches of Starship just filled with fuel. That's an order of complexity that's never been done before in space. That's not the only problem with the HLS, though. Because of the scale of what needs to be done, it's unknown if SpaceX will be ready for 2026 for Artemis 3, especially because, as of the time of making this, Starship has not successfully reached orbit. If SpaceX cannot complete the human landing system in time, the landing of humans on the moon could be delayed until Artemis 4, and Artemis 3 will be a different mission entirely. This is a real possibility. Another problem doesn't have to do with the Artemis program at all, but has to do with the public's perception. From what I've seen, many people simply aren't as interested in the Artemis program as people were in Apollo, despite the fact that Artemis dwarfs Apollo in scale and complexity. The United States seems to become comfortable in space, and many simply don't know what's at stake with the Artemis program. A second space race is beginning, and the United States isn't taking it seriously enough. This is a dangerous mindset, especially because China seems to be taking it very seriously. China's space program has been accelerating very quickly recently. China's already constructed their own major space station in Earth orbit, Tiangong Station, a third of the size of the International Space Station. The fact that China could build such a large station all on their own, when the ISS took the combined effort of the US, Russia, and many European and Asian countries to build, should already show what they're capable of. What's more, China has publicly and officially stated that they're going to try to land people on the moon before the year 2030. These aren't rumors, these are direct statements from the government. And unlike the Artemis program, which has left their plans very vague on how they're going to build a lunar colony, China's plans for an International Lunar Research Station, or ILRS, are far more detailed, with multiple phases involving reconnaissance, construction, and utilization of resources on the moon. These facts alone show that China is taking beating the United States back to the moon extremely seriously, and I think they could be able to pull it off. It is possible that China is overstating their capabilities, but based on Tiangong Station and other Chinese successes in space, including landing the first rover on the far side of the moon and their own Mars rovers, 
I think it's safe to say that a lot of what they claim to be able to do, they actually can. To be fair, the rockets China will use to build the ILRS, along with its international partners like Russia, are still under development, and have been for a while. Meanwhile, the United States already has the space launch system and Starship, putting them ahead. Plus, we've already sent people to the moon, so we have experience in that regard. The United States has clear advantages in this race already, but with the delays involving Starship and severe lack of public interest in the Artemis program I've seen, there's a small but real possibility that it will be China that establishes the first colony on the moon, and not the United States. While I don't think this is likely to happen, there's a real chance it could, and it's not something many Americans are taking seriously. I think we should. A second space race is beginning, and we're just at the start of it. And this one will likely be far more important than the first, as the first human colonies and other worlds will be developed by the end of it. This will launch humanity into a new age, with huge leaps forward in technology directly benefiting everyone on Earth. It's important that we take this space race just as seriously, if not more so, as we took the first one. The United States has been dominant in space for a very long time, and for the first time in a while, China could actually seriously compete with us. Whoever makes the first colony on the moon will cement themselves as a dominant power for many decades, if not centuries, to come. And the moon will open up a whole new frontier for us to explore, and even pave the way to Mars. But who will get there first? That's up to us to decide. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space colonization.